Hey guys, it's Visaya here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Sony PS5, Sony PlayStation 5, literally the most hyped piece of tech. I'll be answering all the questions that you guys asked me on Twitter and Instagram about this console, and also the 8K TV from Samsung. Shout out to them for sending out the TV, you know, over to the studio here. And yeah, it's one of the highly sought after consoles or pieces of tech really this year, and it's quite scarce as well. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my experience using this console for the past couple of days. And without further ado, let's jump right in. First things first, we'll be unboxing the Sony PS5. I'll quickly breeze through the unboxing as you've probably watched a ton of unboxings already. However, if you haven't, you're welcome to join the unboxing. The box I have here is white and the major differentiator between the black and white PS5 box is that the black is the digital edition while the white is the Blu-ray disc edition which is probably the more popular option. Right at the front you see the logo with the PS5, you also see the badge displayed, the 8K, 4K120 and HDR. It's just more photos on the console to the left side and the branding on the side of the box. Of course, there's some unique selling points at the back and on the top corner is where you see the storage space of 825 gigabytes. The first thing you get in the box is the safety guide documentation and of course the quick start guide. You immediately see the controllers in all its glory. It does look and feel different from what I'm used to coming from the DualShock 4 but I'll get into it later. Next up is the power cord, the thick HDMI 2.1 cable for high quality 4K or maybe eventual 8K gaming, the USB-C cord for the controller and the base plate for standing your PS5 or laying it to the side. This can be used to rest your console to the side as I mentioned or you can attach it underneath to stand your console upright. Either way, it's a necessary accessory if you want to lay your console flat, especially if you want to lay your console flat. Once you get all the accessories out, you see the PS5 protected by some egg crate like covering and wrap and my first impression was definitely the heft. It felt very heavy in the hand and on my first look, it does look amazing and strikingly different from any console on the market right now. Speaking of the accessories, my buddy Idris from Apple Direct Store sent me a charging dock or the DualSense charging station as PlayStation calls it and on the back of that box, you see a pictorial representation of how you can charge two controllers at once, so it's a neat solution. You've got a manual inside, charging brake and power cord. The charging dock here also looks well packaged like the PS5 itself. It looks and feels solidly built and throughout my test, it just works. When the controller sits on the dock, it lights up and it's not a must have, but if you're getting two controllers, I think it's a neat solution. Oh, and it looks kind of like the PS5 if you look at them side by side. The PS5 looks really, really different and stands out among everything else with the vents up front and how the light is manipulated, the grill on the back and the textures all around it. There's a series of triangle, cross, square and circles, you know, all around the console and all around the controller itself. It's the small details and you know, it's something that I loved and took note of a lot. Up front and in the middle black pane, you've got the USB port. Uh, next to it is the USB-C port, the eject button, and lastly, the power button. To the right side, you get the disc slot since we've got the Blu-ray edition. On the back, it looks rather aggressive with the grill. You get two more USB ports, a LAN port, the HDMI port, and power port. If you guys are enjoying this video, please hit that like button and of course consider subscribing so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video. Now to the questions. I'll be starting with Twitter and the first question from Twitter is from Dapo Michael. He asks, I know the PS5 is really stunning and kind of overhyped. My question is what is or are the major upgrades from the PS4? Is it really worth the price especially since it costs about 600,000 naira here in Nigeria which is of course a very wide margin when compared to the PS4. I won't lie, when the PS5 was announced, I was expecting it to sell out, but I wasn't expecting it to sell out this way and also become scarce. I read a news article about someone staying out of a store for what felt like two days to buy this console on Black Friday. Yes, it's because there's a very, 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 very huge demand for this console, which doesn't meet the supply. That is why there's a hike in price because people really, really want to get this console but they just can't get it right now, or at least they can't get it for the recommended retail price. You'll find it online for $800 to $1,000. However, the store I got this from is currently selling it, although at a high amount, 
it's not up to the current price that it's been sold among many other stores that this console is being sold others are selling for like 600,000 or even more like this person mentioned and i'll leave a link in the description below so you can contact the store the name of the store is gizmo stores they sell many other tech items accessories that you can use for the ps5 and many things like your smart watches many computer many consumer electronic products really check them out tell them i sent you lastly to answer the question i have no doubt that the ps5 is worth it to be fair if you have the right tv the right amount of internet speed nothing much to it really you're good to go this brings me to the next question from goldie Aja. i hope i'm pronouncing that name correctly uh, he asks do the details distract you from the gameplay or make it more immersive i'm assuming he's referring to the 8k tv here if that's so then not at all uh it felt really really great to use one thing to note is that the ps5 doesn't support 8k yet or 8k content just yet according to some articles um 8k will be announced at a later date however it does support 4k gaming at 120 fps which is very very immersive in its own right the samsung 8k tv here is the q800 t 8k hdr and so many amazing features however for the ps5 when you plug it into the tv's dedicated gaming port you see the ui or user interface that shows the full 8k glory however gameplay is still limited to 4k as i mentioned a similar question was asked from Xiaomi and is curious about recommendations for tvs to pair with the ps5 and i'll just say it's the same thing as what i mentioned earlier most consoles will take 4k perfectly however 8k gaming is sort of limited to pc for now i think mkbhd made a video about that which i will leave in the description below another question that sort of ties into what we've been asking was asked by always moses he says okay tell us about the haptic feedback system of the pad ray tracing 4k 60 fps 4k 120 fps and 8k games the q led should do well i hope the tv you're using supports hdmi 2.1 now the controller of this console is nothing short of brilliant uh, it feels new in every way in the hand the vibrations oh especially the vibrations um, when i was playing games like spider-man i could feel every vibration from when the person touched um, the character from the bad guy fighting stomping on the ground the ground shaking and you know when he swings nearly everything was felt in vibration so i thought that was very cool and that's something i was looking forward to and exploring more of to so the triggers um the triggers of this pad felt quite real <laughs> like real triggers of course when you when the pad is off you won't feel it however when it's turned on it feels very different during gameplay it becomes a bit harder to press and it's context aware there's also a bit of clicking to it and it's just very responsive i can explain all i want but you have to try it to know how good it is one of the details i also like about this controller is the tiny embossed characters that has defined playstation the cross box triangle and circle all around it it feels very new in the hand compared to holding the dualshock 4 you know the ps 4s controller i feel like this is way way more value for money and it just looks it it looks very very you know upgraded and very very advanced during the gameplay i did notice that spider-man could work at 4k 60 fps but it would turn off some features like ray tracing and in 4k 30 fps you would get it it's not a huge difference for me i sort of preferred 60 fps as it felt much more smoother in my own experience although i couldn't play any 120 fps games as i didn't have time with the console as much however i'll update you guys on twitter this tv that i'm using the q800 t supports hdmi 2.1 with that dedicated gaming cable when i plugged it in it instantly recognizes that it was a console that was plugged in and that's just brilliant from samsung now the last question from twitter before we move on to instagram nidu asks what is the cost of the 8k tv the 8k tv that we have here in the studio is a 65 inch tv called the q800 t from samsung it's 16 times better than full HD. It's retailing for about 2.5 million naira after import duties and tax. If you want to see a review of this TV, please comment below and make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on and you've liked this video because why haven't you liked this video? <laughs> anyway, now to Instagram. Pimply Faced Tin asks, what are the major differences between this and the PS4? Uh, first off, the build quality is on another level. This is very heavy when I carried it. Looking at both the first gen PS4 and this first gen PS5 side by side, you can tell that the gap in release was there for a reason. The vents, the shapes, the design, everything feels new. The PS4 and the PS4 Pro take a more blocked and edgy look straight up. 
you know while this is more built like a tower shaped design it looks like a building sort of and the dual shock controllers are another evidence that you know that i've described as well so here there is a lot of difference and the good thing is also that the ps5 uh, the ps4's controller will work on the ps5 the ps5's controller will work on the ps4 if you're using the ps4 controller you can't play ps5 games there is a whole lot of craziness to it right now however i just know that they will work but you know this is limited to ps4 stuff even on the ps5 also you will not have any trigger effects on the ps 4 controllers the major things are improved at graphics and you know slight improvements in the haptics that are also there so also yes to sunny alkali who asked this question it will work in terms of noise levels i noticed an ever so slight noise when i was gaming in 4k and it wasn't as loud as the ps4 this was a little bit loud but not so loud also are the r2 and l2 triggers similar to the ps4 nope not in any way the ps5 triggers are very different last question is from fiki vic who says why are guys so obsessed about it no comment I, I i just have no comment anyway guys that's pretty much it on my coverage of the ps5 and the console if there's any question you have about any one of them please send me a dm comment down below if you guys want more in-depth info i have a video linked in the description where i also talked far deeper into some of the features of the ps5 and you can watch that with the link in the description as i mentioned or the card up above thanks a lot for watching if you're interested in the ps5 or the tv i'll have links where you can get them in the description and yeah everything is in the description really so do like this video consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so you'll be the first to know when i post a new video thanks again i'll see you guys in the very next video